We have a linear differential equation with constant coefficients, and it happens to be homogeneous because the right-hand side is equal to zero. Let's go ahead and solve this. We'll start by writing down the characteristic equation. So because we have the third derivative of y here, we'll write down m cubed. And then minus 9, and then here we have the second derivative, so that's m squared. And then plus 15, here we have the first derivative, so that's m. And then here we have the zeroth derivative, or just y, so 25. And this is equal to 0. Whenever you have four terms, you should always try to factor by grouping. In this case, it doesn't appear that that will work. So what we'll use is the rational roots theorem. So let's look for the possible rational roots. So the possible rational roots, well, you look at the last number here, so 25, and you look at the coefficient here, so 1. It's always the last over the first. So the factors of 25 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 5, and then plus or minus 25. And then you divide by the factors of this guy here, so plus or minus 1. So in this case, the possible rational roots are, let's see, 1 over 1 is 1, 5 over 1 is 5, and 25 over 1 is 25. So these are the possible rational roots. So now what we do is we start checking them. So let's check 1. And so to check 1, we use synthetic division. We write the 1 down, and we write the funny box. And then we write the coefficients of the characteristic equation. So in this case, it's 1, negative 9, 15, and then 25. Then you draw a line. You say, OK, you take this number and bring it down. So 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And then you add, so you get negative 8. And then negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. And then you add, so you get 7. 7 times 1 is 7. Oh, no, <laughs> we got 32. So 1 is not a root. So 1 is not a root. So when is it a root? Uh, whenever you get 0 here, that's a good sign because you know that 1 is a root of the original equation. So the next choice, uh, the natural choice to check, is negative 1. Let's hope this works. So let's check negative 1. So here we have negative 1. And then again, 1, negative 9, 15, 25. So 1, negative 9, 15, and then 25. And you just keep doing this and cross your fingers. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, 1, we write that down. So always bring that first one down. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. If we add, we get negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 1 is 10. If we add, we get 25. And 25 times negative 1 is negative 25. We add, we get 0. We can rejoice because this means that m equals negative 1. This guy is a root. So to finish, we started with an equation of degree 3. So we take this piece and we write it as an equation of degree 2. So it's 1 times m squared, which is just m squared minus 10 times m plus 25, and that's equal to 0. This looks like it factors. looks like m minus 5, m minus 5. Yep, because negative 5m and negative 5m give you the middle piece. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, and m times m is m squared. So this is really m minus 5 quantity squared equal to 0. So that tells us that m equals 5 is a root of multiplicity 2, right? Because it appears twice. We have m minus 5, m minus 5. So we have two roots. m equals negative 1. It's a root of multiplicity 1. And m equals 5 is a root of multiplicity 2. So let's go ahead and write the final answer down. Let's start with the negative 1. So y is equal to c1 e to the negative x. Right, you just put the root there, plus c2. Now we'll go to this guy, e to the 5x. But 5 is a root of multiplicity 2. So we have, another, we have another copy of this, and we have to throw in the x. So x, e to the 5x. That's because it's multiplicity 2. If it was multiplicity 3, then we would have c4, x squared, e to the 5x, and so on. So I hope that helps.